Hello, I'm Phil Mollen, energy psychotherapist, and I thought it was time I made a little video about the history of energy psychology and energy psychotherapy. Uh, now, all versions of any kind of history are a mixture of the um, the objective and uh, the the, uh, the subjective. So, inevitably, this um, uh, this is my own perspective. Uh, but understanding the history of energy psychotherapy is uh, quite important because if you if you don't know this history, uh, you might just think these energy methods are just very very strange, and you'd wonder how on earth did someone think that up? It must have been a mad person. Uh, procedures like tapping on acupoints whilst using uh, strange forms of words um, and strange breathing procedures and, and so on. Where did it all come from? Uh, and the point is that um, uh, many people, there have been many people who've contributed to the development of energy psychology and energy psychotherapy over um, quite a number of decades uh, and it's all developed from uh, one person building on what another person has uh, explored and a great deal of it is to do with um, trial and error people just observing uh, noticing odd things exploring them and uh, seeing what happens if you do certain things. And th the great thing about it, uh, uh, this drives some people potty, but the great thing about it is that it's not actually based on any theory whatsoever. Uh, we can make theories about it, but it doesn't come from any theoretical position whatsoever. It comes from um, reality. It comes from um, uh, observation, exploration, trial and error. Um, okay, there's, there's one thing I'd like to say uh, uh, at this point, which is that uh, one thing that energy psychology methods uh, show us, reveal to us, is that uh, the troubling patterns in our mind, in our emotions, in our behaviour, uh, they're not actually encoded in the mind or in the brain. Uh, not really even in terms of the unconscious mind. They're, they're encoded somewhere else um, in the information in the subtle energy system that we access through working with meridians and the chakra system and, and, and so on. Um, Currently, I, I tend to think of um, uh, these patterns as encoded uh, as um, organizations of correlithim, correlithim points or correlated thought points in um, a mind body space. It's a higher realm than either uh, the mind or uh, the, the body, uh, somewhat like a mathematical uh, space. Okay, uh, uh, well let's uh, let's go to uh, the history of it. Uh, now the key figure in developing energy psychology uh, uh, was a chiropractor in Detroit uh, in the 1960s and onwards. George Goodhart and uh, he was be beginning to explore uh, oddities, subtleties in uh, muscle tone and uh, no one had actually done this before surprisingly but he was exploring variations in muscle tone and uh, what these revealed and how you can um, uh, uh, test these things by pressing on a muscle such as a, an outstretched arm is commonly what we use 
Uh, and this was the beginnings of um, kinesiology, or as he, he began to call his field applied kinesiology. Uh, he was actually drawing on um, also on the work of uh, uh, another um, practitioner, Frank Chapman, uh, whose work dated back to the 1930s. Uh, so we have uh, uh, Goodhart's work. Now, a, a second uh, source of all of this is more ancient. Uh, ancient knowledge of uh, energy pathways coming from uh, traditional Chinese medicine, also the um, Hindu tradition of the uh, chakra system down the uh, centre of the body. Uh, but Goodhart uh, didn't initially know about these uh, subtle energy uh, systems. But what he did uh, note was that um, uh, a muscle, a muscle tone, would test weak in response to uh, a number of possible factors. It could be a physical factor or a disturbance in an organ system. Uh, or, as he began to integrate this knowledge of uh, the, 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 the new knowledge of um, uh, uh, the subtle energy systems, um, which incidentally was, was greatly enhanced by uh, President Nixon's visit to uh, China and uh, uh, one person in the party needed urgent uh, surgery and um, acupuncture was involved in the um, anaesthetics of that procedure and that helped to um, encourage interest in um, uh, uh, acupuncture in the meridian system in, uh, in the West. So that was beginning to come into Goodhart's thinking. Uh, and he also noticed then that uh, a muscle might test weak in response to a disturbance in uh, a particular uh, meridian. But also that a muscle may test weak in response to a troubling thought or emotion. And that's where it gets... Um, interesting for us in the field of psychology and uh, psychotherapy and the way in which um, uh, energy testing, muscle testing, uh, can be a way of eavesdropping on the unconscious mind. Uh, okay and so many things were beginning to emerge from Goodhart's work and various practitioners in different fields, different disciplines, gathering around Goodhart's uh, study group. This was through the 1960s and 70s. And um, the, 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 the ramifications of this began to um, uh, spread and um, uh, fields like um, um, educational kinesiology began to develop um, uh, touch for health became a popular movement. Um, Paul Dennison, Dr. Paul Dennison, um, suffered with severe dyslexia, and um, this led to his exploration of what has been termed neurological disorganization. And um, uh, uh, this was also found to be very much linked to. Uh, disorganization in the subtle energy system and so methods began to be developed for balancing the subtle energy system as well as ban balancing the um, uh, the hemispheres of the brain and um, uh, procedures such as uh, cross crawl or uh, cross patterning began to uh, be developed and, the, and these all became part of the uh, evolving field that uh, later gave rise to energy psychology. Now then we get to John Diamond who uh, was a psychiatrist, um, Australian born but a member of the British Royal College of Psychiatrists. Um, he's still alive, um, uh, living and working now in New York.
And he was, he's been a very key figure, although um, um, he, he doesn't, for his own reasons, he doesn't really like the, um, uh, the field of energy psychology, but um, he, he acknowledges that um, he played a very key part in uh, what has developed. So John Diamond helped to explore um, the field of applied kinesiology into the, the realm of the, the emotional, the psychological, and the uh, psychiatric. And uh, he, he, he wrote a number of books at, at that time uh, that revealed many fascinating uh, phenomena uh, integrating mind, body, uh, brain, and energy system. Um, uh, and also how uh, the use of words um, can influence uh, meridians and emotions. And, uh, you get many different levels of phenomena uh, revealed to be connected in the uh, in Diamond's explorations. For example, he made the point that uh, a, a patient with uh, cardiac problems, they might muscle test uh, weak when the, um, the heart meridian, uh, the heart acupuncture meridian is stimulated. The muscle tone goes weak. Now he makes the point that that's not really very surprising because the heart meridian is connected uh, in some way to the heart. Uh, but he said that what is very surprising and very interesting is that if you have the person say the words, my heart is full of love, then the, the, the muscle tone will test strong that meridian will no longer be making the uh, the muscle tone uh, weak uh, the person doesn't have to believe the words just saying those words has an effect on the meridian system and the muscle tone so here you're getting uh, interesting links between um, uh, the body the heart the energy system, the heart meridian, uh, muscle tone, and um, words. The words can have uh, an effect. Uh, now John Diamond's work was uh, full of allusions to um, psychoanalysis. And um, there's one uh, little interesting feature of his uh, writings that I'll mention. Um, uh, and uh, this is from, um, a quote, I'm quoting from his uh, 1986 book uh, called The uh, uh, the Remothering Experience, um, um, uh, all to do with uh, meridians and emotions and so forth. And um, uh, he uh, he stated that he felt that the uh, the fundamental emotional problem for human beings is often hatred of the mother and a doubt of the mother's love. Uh, so here's something he wrote: the single most important fact I've learned in my years in psychiatry and preventive medicine is that love is the great healer. And yet we all know that there is something inside ourselves that prevents us loving fully, completely opening our hearts and making a total commitment. The basic reason for this lies in our inability to totally love our mothers. The problem begins in the first minutes of life as a result of the unnatural nature of our births. Uh, And um, uh, he, he finds that 
almost everyone will test strong to the statement, uh, I want to kill my mother. Um, uh, if I test myself to that, um, no, it's, it's, uh, it's weak to that. I, I don't have a desire to kill my mother, but um, if I test whether I did um, a few decades ago, then it comes up, yes. Um, and uh, he, he, he wrote, uh, this desire to kill your mother is the most primitive destructive force in you. It is not just hate, it is the murderous impulse, and it is the recognition of this that led Freud and Melanie Klein to postulate the death instinct. Ah, okay. Um, and um, he, he really throughout Diamond's work, he, he's revealing how uh, energy testing, muscle testing, reveals the, uh, the deeper unconscious forces at work in our, uh, in our being. And, and this is what we use in um, energy psychotherapy uh, uh, currently. Muscle testing will enable us very rapidly to um, uh, locate the, uh, the issue. We can quickly test hypotheses and discard hypotheses that are uh, incorrect. Um, and Diamond made the point that just as uh, Freud in his 19, 1900 book on the interpretation of dreams uh, stated that dreams function as the royal road to the unconscious, uh, it's true. Uh, Diamond was showing how muscle testing functions as another, uh, more direct window to hidden motives and uh, emotions. Um, so Diamond was um, uh, really um, uh, key in uh, all of what developed. And he was very holistic as a, a practitioner. Um, uh, and he, he wrote the following, uh, the start of all illness is the loss of the inherent will to be well. In fact, I believe that the illness itself is this loss of the will to be well, just differently manifested, depending on various lesser etiological factors. Um, now, one of the uh, the the, the uh, key uh, uh, muscle tests I uh, usually do with with a client is to muscle test the statement "I want to be well," and quite commonly, not always, but quite commonly, uh, that will test as no, much to the surprise and sometimes consternation of the the client or the patient. Um, but fortunately, uh, we can resolve those um, those factors quite uh, easily. Uh, the energy system has become uh, reversed. Now, when the energy system is reversed, then it's working against the person. It's working against uh, being well. It's working against uh, their conscious um, uh, goals. Uh, it's a self-sabotage pattern, uh, and so it's it's important to correct that. And um, fortunately, there are ways of simple ways, very simple ways, of working with the energy system to uh, uh, bring about that resolution. And we can also explore. Um, uh, you see, sometimes that kind of reversal. Uh, is is just a reversal in the whole energy system. Something has affected the energy system. Uh, sometimes there's been an illness. Sometimes there's been uh, a, a big uh, shock. Um, uh, so some, sometimes there are... Um, uh, psychological forces behind it, motives behind it. Uh, sometimes it's a, it's a feeling that it's not um, 
uh, it's not uh, safe to be well uh, or I don't deserve to be well um, um, we can explore all those things and uh, the roots and origins and uh, uh, causes of, of, of those things um, okay uh, let's uh, move on a little um, um, by the way, uh, uh, Diamond's term for the, the kind of uh, reversal I was just describing was um, a reversal of the body's morality, which is uh, an, an interesting uh, uh, phrase. Uh, okay. Um, uh, now, you, you, I hope you get the idea from what I've described of Diamond's work that um, uh, the energy psychology procedures um, they can be kind of kind of quick, but the the a person's overall condition may be very deep and multi-layered. So the the overall work may not be uh, all that quick. But the, um, the the procedures within it uh, can produce effects um, uh, very quickly, so it can make the work um, quite um, uh, efficient. Uh, now, one of the people, um, uh, one of the other people wor working with um, Goodhart, Goodhart study group, was a psychologist called Roger Callahan. Uh, clinical psychologist in California. Um, in background, he'd um, uh, he, he was a, a, a cognitive therapist in the uh, Albert Ellis tradition, um, and so he'd been studying with uh, Goodhart and with Diamond, and he received uh, treatment from John Diamond for his uh, own many phobias. And um, uh, Diamond, uh, Roger Callahan had um, a patient, uh, Mary. Uh, this is an actual uh, uh, case, and the patient, Mary, Mary Ford, has um, is on record as um, confirming all of this. Uh, she had uh, um, a, a, a lifelong. Uh, very disabling fear of water didn't like to be anywhere near water didn't like to be in the uh, rain or to see uh, a river or the ocean or didn't like to drink water very much didn't like to bathe in it just didn't like water um, no clear origins just been there as long as she could remember and um, Callahan figured out that uh, the problem was was showing up as a disturbance in her stomach meridian and um, acting on a whim as he later put it he invited her to uh, tap on one end of the uh, stomach meridian which is under the eye and after a few seconds of tapping mary leapt up exuberantly shouting it's gone and um, ran towards his swimming swimming pool at his home office in California and um, uh, Callahan was alarmed thought she'd gone bonkers and was going to jump in and shouted Mary come back you can't swim and she shouted it's all right Dr Callahan I'm not going to jump in I just want to splash in the water and she explained that that feeling of intense anxiety that she'd always felt in her stomach area had instantly gone and actually it never came back uh, so that was the first uh, instance of tapping on an acupoint uh, to release um, an intense emotional uh, fear state now Callahan went on exploring this and uh, found of course that um, 
most of his patients uh, did not respond quite so easily and um, that uh, for many problems a whole sequence of meridians needed to be tapped and he used muscle testing to um, find the sequence of meridians. It's a simple enough procedure although it, it takes a bit of practice and learning to, to grasp it but it's uh, essentially simple as a sequence of meridians and he also found that um, some people would not respond and they were people who would uh, muscle test weak to I want to be well so this was the same phenomenon that um, John Diamond had identified as a reversal in the body's morality system and Roger Callahan called it um, psychological reversal uh, and whatever we call it it's very very uh, important and eventually he found certain ways of um, uh, that would help to correct that um, psychological reversal uh, tapping on this side of the hand small intestine meridian point seemed to uh, play a big uh, role in that uh, often combined with a statement of um, self-acceptance. Now Callahan went a bit further in uh, formulating uh, what this was all about, what, what this whole um, energy psychological work was about and um, so he began to refer to the thought field which is like a, a, a field of information in the energy system, the thought field. And he conceptualized perturbations in this thought field that were cleared when we tap in the correct way on um, the, 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 the right sequence of uh, acupoints. Later, he linked this to the uh, morphogenic fields developed by um, uh, that, that concept developed by um, uh, uh, senior moment I can't uh, rem remember his name the British uh, biologist Rupert, Rupert Sheldrake Rupert Sheldrake's concept of morphogenic fields um, uh, um, now, one of the interesting features of, of Callahan's work, this was rather later, this was uh, decades later, uh, coming into the um, 2000s, uh, he, he began to uh, identify ways in which psychological reversal, these psychological and energetic reversals, we might say psychoenergetic reversals, can actually be identified as uh, shifts or reversals in literally in the voltage patterns on the human body so if there's an area of illness in the body and it's a site of um, energetic reversals and the voltage patterns would actually literally be reversed in that area uh, it's quite a, a uh, it's not a, an entirely clear thing to observe, but you you can detect these patterns with um, simple uh, volt voltmeters. Um, uh, he also um, uh, developed a, a procedure that he called voice technology. Now, uh, rather deceptively, uh, he allowed people to. Um, believe now he didn't he didn't state this he just allowed people to believe this that voice technology uh, involved some clever computer system because voice technology was a procedure whereby a, a practitioner working by phone with the client could diagnose the relevant meridian sequence and tell the client over the phone which points to tap on. And uh, uh, he didn't say this involved a computer system. He would just say, well, this was the way he developed uh, 
for working with people by phone. There was no restriction then on geographical locality. Uh, and uh, this was a rather secretive procedure and um, uh, to uh, learn this procedure, to become trained in it, uh, was uh, very expensive indeed. Um, now, we now know that um, it didn't involve any uh, computer program whatsoever. Uh, it was uh, essentially the practitioner uh, self-muscle tests as proxy for the client. And um, it works very well, works very well indeed. And it's um, uh, uh, absolutely um, uh, uh, an absolutely standard thing we can uh, learn to do. Um, and um, yeah, but um, there it was. It's a, um, uh, strange part of the uh, of, of the history uh, voice technology um, okay um, I just I mentioned someone else who was um, important in the um, in the background um, uh, James Dolica uh, he, he's less well known uh, he, he also was a chiropractor and involved with um, uh, Good Hearts Group, and um, he also uh, was using muscle testing to detect um, psychological reversal and also to detect the meridians involved, the pattern of meridians involved in the issue, whatever the client's issue would be. So um, I just mentioned James Dolica. Um, because um, he's not so well known, but he was a significant contributor. And uh, he wrote a book, um, Freedom from Fear Forever. And uh, uh, he, he died some, year, some years ago. Um, now, through the 1980s, Callahan, Roger Callahan, was pretty much on his own uh, promoting thought field therapy. And um, uh, he, he was presenting his work on little American radio uh, shows and TV shows and uh, doing live demonstrations uh, with, with um, actual people. And a um, uh, risky thing to do, but mostly uh, it worked. And um, he was um, you know, be presented as Dr. Roger Callahan and his amazing five-minute phobia cure, this kind of thing. Uh, so it wasn't until the, um, into the 1990s really, that uh, other people were uh, picking up his work and uh, developing it in various ways. Incidentally, uh, um, uh, the American Psychological Society um, um, uh, tried uh, did an investigation of um, Roger Callahan's work, like a, um, uh, a a malpractice investigation, that, that thinking that his um, his work must be um, fraudulent in in some way, and so some uh, woman from the uh, American Psychological Association. Uh, visited Callahan and um, uh, to uh, investigate uh, his strange procedure uh, that uh, colleagues were thinking must be um, no, must be must be mad uh, or fraudulent or both. Uh, anyway, the the investigator uh, looked at Callahan's uh, files and was so impressed by the uh, r results she was reading about, um, that um, all complaints were, um, the whole investigation was dropped. And uh, she asked Callahan to treat all her anxiety and phobic problems, uh, which was done uh, successfully. 
then we come into um, uh, 1995, and one of um, uh, Callahan's students, um, uh, Gary Craig, um, who was uh, didn't have really any mental health uh, professional background, but he was um, interested in these things and. Um, he did a lot of training with Roger Callahan, and the two of them fell out. And um, as a result of this, uh, in, in what I've always thought was a, a, a wonderful combination of uh, altruism and vengeance, uh, launched uh, a simplified form of uh, thought field therapy uh, called emotional freedom techniques. And um, uh, this did not involve any concern with uh, meridian sequence. Uh, it was um, uh, it was just tapping uh, tapping all the points um, uh, whilst the person held the problem issue in mind and using simple words and phrases to uh, relate to this. And uh, surprisingly, uh, it. Uh, works extremely well. Now, um, uh, one of the things that Gary Craig emphasized was in being very specific in the target of, of what the client holds in mind and the words that the client uses to refer to the problem issue. It's a bit like if you're uh, using a, a laser to clear stuff away, you need to precise instructions on guiding the the laser needs precise uh, informational guidance as to where it's directed and so being specific about the focus uh, was very important in Gary Craig's uh, work um, now I think this principle of specificity is important but that uh, in Callahan's thought field therapy, the specificity is in the sequence of the meridians. Whereas in Gary Craig's work, EFT, the specificity is in the target. You've got to be clear which target, what, what experience, what event, and the different details of the event. Whereas with Callahan's thought field therapy, you don't need to be quite so specific in the target. You need to have a target, but it doesn't have to be quite so specific because the specificity comes through the sequence of uh, meridians. And that's a very interesting point, I find. Uh, EFT became very uh, well known. Gary Craig made it very easy to access a, a website uh, with uh, lots of um, case histories on it, people could contribute to it, and he made uh, lots of um, uh, videos, DVDs, and, and so forth that um, uh, could be purchased um, quite inexpensively. And uh, EFT became a big um, worldwide uh, phenomenon. Um, now, other interesting uh, um, approaches were developing this Tapas acupressure technique, uh, Tapas Fleming, an acupuncturist in California, um, used a particular, um, uh, what she, she called it the TAT pose. Um, these acupoints and the third eye uh, chakra and um, back of the head flows of energy and she devised a, a, a very coherent structured series of thoughts thoughts clear succinct thoughts that the client would hold in mind using this pose a sequence of thoughts that um, uh, were, were very uh, uh, in ingeniously developed and structured to uh, bring about a healing process on 
whatever target was um, held in mind. Uh, it's a brilliant, brilliant procedure. Um, uh, yes, Judith Swack, I should just mention her, her approach, healing from the body level up. Uh, in background, Judith Swack was a cell biologist. Um, uh, her work is very uh, extensive and um, uh, in ingenious. Um, it's, it's very uh, multi-layered, um, uh, complex, uh, and yet the, the, the procedures are simple, but the whole uh, map, the whole framework is um, uh, complex and comprehensive, and uh, uh, she's a, a remarkable uh, innovator. Um, Asher Clinton, uh, was a uh, Jungian psychotherapist who developed um, advanced integrative therapy, or as it was originally called Seymour Matrix, advanced integrative psychotherapy, working with the chakra system. And it's another of the uh, uh, deeper uh, approaches. And um, uh, part of it is looking at the, uh, uh, the, the deeper beliefs and cognitions that uh, structure uh, our mind and, and behavior. There are many uh, uh, complexities to the uh, uh, different levels of advanced integrative therapy. Um, now, energy psychotherapy, as we call it in Britain, in the UK, uh, this really arose through uh, recognition of the um, uh, the need to uh, integrate the uh, energy psychology modalities into the complexities of the psychodynamics and um, uh, the, the multi-layered nature of the uh, psychotherapeutic process. Um, and um, uh, I, I think I, I can truthfully say that um, I've played a, a, a significant role in the development of this field of energy psychotherapy uh, in, in Britain. Um, uh, because I, I looked at these, these various methods and uh, these modalities of energy psychology and I could see uh, their potential. Uh, for working with uh, deep parts of the uh, mind, the mind-body energy system and the dynamics of the mind, uh, the, the unconscious processes that we are familiar with in uh, psychoanalysis. Um, uh, so I, I am a psychoanalyst, um, that's still uh, in, important to me, but the way I work is not um, conventional psychoanalysis. Uh, psychological reversal seems to me to uh, uh, be a key expression of the dynamics of the mind. And in my work that I call psychoanalytic energy psychotherapy, uh, it, it's very free associative and it's, um, uh, I see it as a way of allowing the meridians to speak. And um, uh, so we do a lot of energy testing, clarifying the issues and testing different hypotheses, trying to get a clear, precise and accurate sense of what's going on for this person and the roots and uh, origins of, of this, the, for, the key formative experiences, uh, key traumas, key uh, conflicts and the key areas of pain. Um, um, the black holes in the mind, the feared areas, the sort of no-go um, areas, um, all, all of these things. Um, and um, through tapping on the, the relevant uh, sequence of um, uh, meridian points um, in relation to a, a, a target issue, I do see it as allowing the meridians to speak and the relevant material, thoughts, memories, emotions, uh, conflicts, um, 
traumas will uh, start to emerge often uh, with startling rapidity and uh, as we uh, work with the energy system in relation to those issues they they just start to dissolve um, let me say a little bit about uh, my own role in in how things have developed in Britain in the energy psychotherapy field um, now I, I was interested in psychoanalysis um, uh, since I was a young adolescent and I, I actually wrote to the Institute of Psychoanalysis at age 16 inquiring about how to train as an analyst and uh, so I, I loved the, the, the psychoanalytic uh, field um, I trained as a um, clinical psychologist and then I trained in psychotherapy at the Tavistock Clinic and later did a full psychoanalytic training at the Institute. Um, so I worked in the, in, the, in the British National Health Service um, uh, for uh, many, many, well 37 years actually. Uh, till I left there in 2014. Um, uh, several decades ago, I'm thinking back to the um, uh, mid to late to late 1980s, actually, um, working in a, a general psychiatric setting. I found to my dismay that um, conventional uh, the psychotherapeutic methods uh, were often li quite literally worse than useless with uh, people who'd suffered a lot of trauma and that was the case with uh, a lot of the patients I was seeing. Uh, talking about trauma would make them uh, f uh, uh, their mental state much worse. Uh, even if it was a very gentle empathic kind of um, um, process. And this got me searching for uh, better ways of helping people, particularly those who'd uh, suffered uh, trauma. And uh, so that, that, that search for better ways um, uh, continued and it still continues now. That's uh, what I try to do. So um, uh, I, I learned about EMDR that came along in the late 80s, early 90s and is, is now well established. Uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. It's a good method and um, I found that very helpful. Um, and for me it was very psychoanalytic in the content of what uh, it emerged. Um, now some of the uh, early adopters of EMDR in the United States became early adopters of um, these energy psychology methods. So it was via EMDR that I began to hear about uh, uh, these different acupoint tapping methods and related methods. Uh, and uh, so I began to learn them and became uh, fascinated by them and I began to talk to others about them. Um, now into the 1990s, um, by the late 1990s, um, I uh, was a little bit well well known in the uh, psychotherapy uh, field. I'd um, given quite a lot of talks and um, I'd written a number of books on uh, themes like the, the structure of narcissistic disturbance, um, trauma, uh, traumatic memory, dissociative identity disorder, cohort self-psychology and, and so on. Um, and uh, so I, I often gave talks and workshops on these sorts of uh, uh, topics. And then I began to talk about uh, energy psychology and energy psychotherapy, which 
uh, greatly interested some and horrified others. Uh, now, uh, some uh, colleagues, uh, particularly uh, from a Jungian background, uh, became interested and um, uh, so others began to uh, train in these uh, methods. Um, um, I talked about um, uh, uh, advanced integrative psychotherapy after uh, um, after doing a training in it in the United States. I talked to people about that, and so quite a number of people did trainings in uh, uh, AIT, um, um, sometimes in Britain and sometimes going to the States to uh, do these trainings there. And Asher Clinton came over here and gave uh, a, a number of uh, workshops. And um, so uh, lots of uh, strands of psychotherapy and energy psychology were gradually uh, coming together. Um, and uh, uh, some of my colleagues um, uh, began teaching uh, uh, an integration of um, these many different uh, uh, strands um, uh, through a... Um, um, through an organization called um, Converging Streams. Converging Streams. They provided a number of um, uh, workshops um, uh, over several years. And uh, then more recently, uh, in 2020, some of us linked up with the um, what was the conf Confer, 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 organization which uh, was well established um, organization providing continuing professional development for psychotherapists in the UK and uh, we put on uh, a one-year program in energy psychotherapy uh, this was only for qualified psychotherapists who wanted to integrate uh, these methods and um, it was very successful. We had a huge number of um, applicants, um, and we uh, did it twice. Now the pandemic meant that um, uh, it had to all go online. Initially, it was all planned as an in-person uh, process, um, so we had to quite rapidly get get to grips with uh, uh, the use of Zoom and the breakout rooms and and also to give prominence to teaching uh, what was essentially voice technology, um, a practitioner uh, self-testing uh, on behalf of the, uh, of the client. Um, now, uh, unfortunately, earlier this year, Confer, uh, quite unexpectedly, went into liquidation. So we were rather adrift, but fortunately, um, our new program, one-year program in energy psychotherapy, is um, uh, starting um, this January, January 2024, with the Essential Therapy uh, Training Organization, which is another very good organization. Um, so that's our one-year program, energy uh, energy therapy, uh, uh, essential, essential therapy training, uh, one year program in energy psychotherapy. Um, uh, I want to mention a couple more things. Uh, now, one of the interesting developments in the energy psychology field is that uh, they, they gradually developed uh, an increasing emphasis upon um, the use of intention and the careful use of words, and um, a lessened emphasis on actual um, acupoint uh, tapping. Um, and it's as if it's as if the the morphic field, the whole 
collectomorphic field has developed to an extent where the physical activation of the energy system is no longer quite so essential and through a more meditative state of mind we can um, enter that higher uh, realm of the energy field and use our intention and words to bring about the required changes and um, that process I, it was inherent in Tapas Fleming's uh, TAT to an extent and then it's very much the case in modern approaches like um, logosynthesis and um, ask and receive um, ask and receive wonderful approach developed by my friends and colleagues um, Tom and Pam Altaffer and um, uh, oh dear I, it's, it's third person a senior moment um, um, uh, uh, Sandy Brodomsky Sandy Brodomsky <laughs> do apologise there uh, Ask and Receive developed by Tom and Pam Altafa and Sandy Radomsky. Um, okay, what else do I need to say? Um, okay, so um, there, ha there have been uh, um, people from the realms of pure, um, pure science rather than uh, therapeutic practice that have also contributed greatly to our developing field. Uh, in particular, uh, William Tiller, professor of, uh, deceased now, professor of material science at Stanford University. Uh, wonderful work on um, meditation, the energy system, and uh, the effect of intention, how it affects um, uh, matter, mind, energy, intention, effects, matter, the, the physical realm, the, the quantum world. Also the physicist Claude Swanson, his work on torsion fields. Um, Dean Radin has done wonderful work, uh, many books. Dean Radin's experiments um, on um, uh, meditators, how meditators are able to use intention to influence effects at the quantum level. Meditators can affect uh, the double slit phenomena, if you know about that uh, realm of quantum physics. Um, my own interest these days, um, I think of it as exploring uh, the physics of the mind. The physics and metaphysics of the mind. Um, so I, I've been in, immersed in energy uh, psychology and em energy psychotherapy since um, around the year 2000, I think. And it is endlessly fascinating. It's, um, it's, it's never dull and there are more things to explore and discover uh, every day uh, with each, each client. Um, oh, and let me just mention ASEP, the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology, utterly wonderful organisation, the international organisation for the professional field of uh, energy psychology. It's um, it, it's run with um, uh, great um, uh, dedication and love by uh, its. Um, uh, has small salaried staff and many uh, volunteers. Uh, absolutely uh, first class organisation. And uh, I had the privilege of serving as its uh, uh, president a, a, a few years back. Um, so if you're at all interested in the energy psychology, energy psychotherapy field, uh, do also join ASEP. Uh, okay, that's all from me now. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, bye for now.